To mark the 200th anniversary of the founding of the town of Greece, the Greece Historical Society presents a bicentennial snapshot. Each week we take a look at a particular aspect of Greece history. Today we continue our look at historic weather events. For the most part, we Grecians take snowstorms in stride. They are inconvenient but manageable. We can count on the Greece DPW to have our roads plowed and salted in a timely manner. However, one has to agree with local meteorologist Stacy Pengen. Hearing the words ice and high winds in a forecast can cause some anxiety in these parts, or as the cliche states, once bitten, twice shy. March 4, 1991, an incredible ice storm has hit western New York. Two storms in particular come to mind, the ice storm of 1991 and the windstorm of 2017. Here is a clip from the News Team 10 coverage of the 1991 ice storm recorded March 11, 1991. This particular clip is from the Sunday, March 3rd newscast at 11 p.m. featuring meteorologist John Hamilton and anchor Laura Saxby. This is going to be the winter storm that we have missed, you know, the bullet. And this time, uh, snow lovers are getting cheated. We would probably have 10 inches to a foot oh, of really? snow if it was all snow. Unfortunately, it is freezing rain and sleet. Meteorologist Kevin Williams, in explaining what happened in 1991, said, The ice storm commenced on March 3, 1991. It resulted from low pressure tracking from the south into central in eastern New York. This allowed warm air from the Gulf states to flow into the upper levels of the atmosphere over Rochester, while northeast winds at the surface drew sub-freezing air into the area from Ontario. Snowflakes which fell from the cold clouds above melted into raindrops upon reaching the warmer layer above the surface, only to freeze upon reaching the ground, where temperatures were below 32 degrees. Greece, along with the rest of Monroe County, was in the sweet spot. Again, quoting Kevin Williams, the storm produced a 50-mile wild band of freezing rain aligned along the Genesee River Valley. While Syracuse to the east experienced rain, Buffalo to the west had mainly sleet and snow. But Rochester endured 17 hours of continuous freezing rain, resulting in an ice accretion of more than one inch. It started at about 10.30 p.m. on Sunday, March 3, and by the early morning hours of March 4, people were awoken by what sounded like rifle shots. It was tree limbs cracking and falling to the ground. Electrical wires and telephone lines came down with the trees. Paul Houlihan, Greece Commissioner of Public Works at the time, was alerted to the problem at 2 a.m., and by 4 a.m. knew it was a major event. He called the school superintendent to let him know that the schools needed to be closed. They would be closed for a week. Crews were especially needed to clear the main streets and others were needed to pump water when, because of the lack of power, the sewage pump stations failed. The police headquarters were flooded nearly every day for a week with raw sewage. The police station itself was also without electricity and was working through an emergency generator. Fire crews didn't bother going home, but worked round the clock. Here's the numbers for the amount of power outages from the ice storm, according to WHGC. First, Gabe, here's the latest assessment on the number of homes still without electricity. Rochester Gas and Electric estimates 150,000 customers without power. Niagara Mohawk has an additional 80,000 homes in the dark. 2,500 homes are without power in the Fairport Electric District, and New York State Gas and Electric in the Southern Tier reports an additional 15,000 customers without power. To augment its own line crews, rg and &E is bringing in 39 emergency crews from five other utilities. Hundreds of thousands of homes and businesses in Monroe County were without power, some for as long as two weeks. Sometimes one side of the street had power and the other did not. Neighbors shared generators and long extension cords snaked over lawns and driveways. Two days after the storm, the temperature plummeted. Shelters were set up at Hoover Drive Junior School and the Greece Assembly of God. In North Greece, Irene DeMay welcomed people into the old hotel. 
Uh, we've been handling 2,000 calls an hour since before midnight. 2,000 calls an hour, what's your average? We average around 2,000 calls a day this time of year. What's that? That's the number of calls waiting to be answered, uh, that we do not have someone available to handle at this time. Trash didn't get picked up and mail wasn't delivered for two days. More than 3,000 trees in the town of Greece were damaged. DPW crews were busy into June, clearing away brush and tree debris and hauling it to the Flynn Road Transfer Center, 400,000 cubic yards of it, or enough wood to build 7,000 homes. In the aftermath of the ice storm of 91, the town, already operating on an austerity budget and waiting for FEMA reimbursement, had to borrow money to meet expenses by the end of the year. RG&E started a rigorous tree trimming protocol, and residents were left with indelible memories of terrible destruction, as well as breathtaking beauty, and stories to tell for generations to come about cold nights, help for neighbors, and surviving the storm of the century. The poet T.S. Eliot said that April is the cruelest month, but weather-wise for Greece, it's the month of March. Out of the top 10 worst snowstorms in Rochester's history, four were in March. The 1984 leap day storm lasted more than five days, bringing more than 30 inches. There were two blizzards in the beginning of March 1999, dropping 42 inches of snow. We got off relatively lightly during the storm of the century on March of 1993, just 23 inches of snow, but with thunder and lightning. On March 3, 2017, we had winds gusting to 60 miles an hour, bringing down trees and power lines. But that was just an appetizer for what Mother Nature had in store for us less than a week later. Blame it on the sun. It was a gorgeous day, March 8th. Now the forecast did call for high winds, but most people thought it would be a repeat of the third. However, all that sunshine destabilized the atmosphere. The sun heated the air, and as the warm air rose, it created a vacuum, and air rushed in to fill the vacuum. High wind. Winds gusted to 40, 50, and 60 miles per hour much of the day. Broke 70 miles per hour around 1 p.m., and then hit an astonishing 81 miles per hour at 1.35 p.m. Trees came crashing down onto streets and on top of homes, and on Long Pond Road, utility poles fell in a row like a set of dominoes. 40,000 homes and businesses lost power in Monroe County, a large portion of them in Greece. Repair work was delayed as the high winds persisted into the next day, making it too dangerous for crews. Utility workers from all over came to assist RG&E. Local hotels were full of residents, so a crew from Canada was billeted at the Greece Community Center. Some homes were without power for up to two weeks. Repairs on Long Pond were delayed due to the lack of enough utility poles to replace all the broken ones. We've had more wind and ice storms since these two big ones, which is why whenever ice or wind are in the forecast, we hope it won't be as bad as 1991 or 2017. Thanks for joining us this week. Joining us again next week as we pay tribute to the soldiers of World War I. This is Maureen Whalen inviting you to join us next Tuesday for another Bicentennial Snapshot presented by the Greece Historical Society. Want to learn more from the Greece Historical Society and Museum? Then click that subscribe button for more content and hit that bell icon to get notified when there's more Bicentennial Snapshots. You can visit us on the web at greasehistoricalsociety.org you can find us on Facebook at Greece Historical Society. You can follow us on Twitter at Greece NY History. And you can stop in at the Greece Historical Society at 595 Long Pound Road.